All right, this is Big Boss with Fox Hound Woods Ball coming to you from Fort Lauderdale. And for this particular video, we're going to be discussing paintball gang preparation. This can cover outlaw ball, this could cover regulated fields, big games, scenarios, anything of this nature. We're talking general purpose as far as paintball equipment goes. And let's get to it. All right, I pretty much set up everything required as far as my personal setup for preparing for a paintball game. Um, usually general purpose. This could be set up for one or two players at the most. And it's all the stuff that you're seeing right now. All this stuff has to be able to go into this backpack right here. This backpack is a uh, Alice all-purpose individual carry equipment. This is the LC2 medium rucksack on a standard military issue aluminum pack frame. I've had this for a good number of years even when I first started paintball and it's actually been fairly serviceable so we'll get into that in a second but first before we get into the paintball aspect of all this it doesn't matter whether you're preparing for a game out in the woods or if you're going to a big game or scenario. Safety is always a primary concern, especially for certain medical needs. So we'll get into that right after this. I've played walk-on fields and things of this nature. I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. And one thing that's always a constant is safety. Safety is not a laughing matter on the paintball field. Whether you're in-game or not, you should always be prepared for anything that could come up as far as getting sliced up, getting injured. That's all part of the game. So. As far as like basic first aid, because not that many fields have a first aid station or anything like that, so you've got to be prepared to handle that yourself. Basic first aid kit is usually a thing that can be thrown in to your kit. This one was made by Johnson & Johnson, as you can see inside here. It's got all the accoutrements of your basic household first aid kit. This is usually the standard stuff that you could put in the, your own personalized first aid setup for your gear and everything. You got your gauze, you got your gloves, tweezers, bandages, you got aspirin, cleansing wipes, everything like that. Because of the size of this particular first aid kit you can throw it into a backpack or you can actually throw it into your gear rig such as this basic tactical combat rig you got your ammo pouches canteens and you got the all-important butt pack now this butt pack here is made by Blackhawk Industries it is part of their Alice setup but they do have these in Molly now you can take this butt pack and just pretty much toss this first aid kit into it. And with that, you're pretty much good to go. Just make sure that 
you have it in your kit or in your backpack when you're heading out to the field just in case but what about more personalized first aid stuff I'll be back with that in one minute okay now we're back and I managed to rig up a small first aid kit out of what was in that box I showed you just a second ago now this is pretty much your basic utility map pouch that I got from Special Ops Paintball several years ago. Now it's got an elastic thing on the inside, two zipper open, so if you need to have this for a first aid kit, it's decent at the best because you can easily just unzip, open it up, and you've got most of the accoutrements you need as far as your gauze, your gauze pads, you got cleaning wipes, sandy wipes, bandages, as well as your Tylenol, your Motrin, stuff like that. All can fit into this one little pouch. Now, there is another more unconventional option that we'll get to in one moment. All right, we're back and as you can see, I've got my full tack rig set up with my sidearm here. Left this side blank for quick draw, stuff like that. But as we're talking further on setting up your own personalized first aid kit, you could get just about any medical supplies you need as far as the surgical gloves, the bandages, and well as disinfectant stuff like that. You can find that stuff at your grocery store or any place where first aid items are sold. But moving on, as you can see, my right side right here is usually my support side. I don't have any pistol or any marker strapped to my right leg or anything like that. But I do have this this LC2 mag pouch. Holds three 30 round mags. You cut the dividers out. You put a paintball pod in there. But me... I'm using this right now as an improvised first aid pouch. As you can see, pop it open. I've got the basic essentials, some disinfectant wipes, a large gauze roll, a couple bandages. I've also got the rubber gloves, just in case I need to take care of any bad bleeding, anything like that. You want to avoid that kind of stuff when you're out there, but other than that, I've also got my most important thing, which is an albuterol rescue inhaler. I'm an asthmatic. This needs to be on me at all times, either in a pocket on my jacket that I could easily get to, or on my vest, usually in something that could keep this thing secure and out of the way, probably drop it in the admin pouch, but run the risk of dropping it, so... Throw it in the mag pouch right at the top so that way I could get to it when I need it. Now, just to avoid any type of confusion between your first aid pouch and your ammo pouches, whether you're running pods or, or the magazines, you want to mark this particular pouch as the first aid pouch with a red cross. That is the internationally recognized symbol for medical. Now as we move on further as far as the gun packing, gear packing, we'll be back after this.
Okay, now, when you're getting ready to pack up your stuff for a game, you got to be able to pack this so that way everything fits in here right and is able to work good and it eases the burden on you and the rest of your team. Now, because I'm using an LC2 medium pack, you've got to be pretty smart about this. As you can see, this thing's fairly serviceable. You've got a little compartment here. So that way, for if you were a radio guy in a squad or platoon, you can throw the radio in here. But as far as general stuff for paintball players, woods ball, airsoft, if you're heading out, this pouch is not just good for a radio, but you can also toss the first aid kit in here for your team. Just toss it in here. It's packed. It's ready to go. But you can also throw in a couple spare paintball pods if you got them, such as these. Just make sure that it's not too cumbersome. That will impede you from pulling out the first aid kit if you need to. Okay, now that that's packed up, cinched down, nice and tight, we start throwing in other equipment. Extra paint is a must, especially if you're going to be out there for a while, a couple hours, a day or two. want to be able to have this stuff with an easy access in the field or in your staging area, base camp, whatever. Wanna get this stuff in here? Okay. You got your paint. Moving on. In this little pouch right here is your maintenance equipment. You've got all the stuff necessary to clean and maintain your marker when you're in your base camp or you're in the campgrounds of the scenario game you happen to be attending. You've got your multi Allen, you got an extra barrel plug, you've got the Allen wrenches, you got springs, you got extra parts, oils, lubricants, stuff like that. Zip it up. You could toss this right on top of this little radio pouch along with your first aid kit. All that's in here. You've got your paint. Now this is all the main compartment for what you need. Anything after that, like extra change of clothes if you don't want to go back to your car dirty or nothing. There's that. Okay, let's cinch this up. Now let's move on to more equipment. Give me one moment. Alright, now, if you're carrying some extra stuff for a friend or a teammate, in my case, it would be for my brother, who's a team sniper. We got his ghillie suit right up here. As you can see, as the pack is pretty much packed up right now. There's not a lot of room to throw the ghillie suit in the main compartment. So what we did was I took the ghillie suit in case in its bag, put it through the straps of the Alice pack that I used to latch down the main compartment and flap that way it's easy you can carry it like this not a problem or there's another method to doing this to make things a little more secure and protected and that would be take the ghillie suit out of the straps and just put it in the main flap of the backpack as I'm about to demonstrate Now as you can see, pack is pretty much open, secured, just got to throw the ghillie suit on here and make sure it's latched down right. 
Just gotta make sure this thing's nice and tight. So you've got everything you need right here. And it's on, it's secured. This thing ain't going nowhere. Now you've also got some other stuff you can put in the three pockets that are used for extra equipment, stuff like that. So, when you're playing Outlaw Ball, or if you're playing a big game or a major scenario, you always want to have at least one or two extra air tanks with you because the tank could malfunction for any reason. Or if you're playing an Outlaw game, you'll need to have an extra tank when you run out of air. So... For the, that would be why I would put in the middle compartment. It's ideal for carrying your tanks in and you'll know where it is right there on the spot. Usually that's the first thing you want to go to. Some people are drawn to something that's in the middle of things. So you've got that. Because these straps are adjustable, you can get anything from a 9 ounce up to a 20 ounce air tank in here. I've got a 16 and a 20 ounce in here currently. As you can see, snapped. Chinch it down. Make sure this thing's nice and tight. That way nothing rolls around. Nothing could fall out. Right there. Second pouch more on the side here as you can see this side pouch I'm putting in for my extra equipment cause I run a grenade launcher on my gun I've got green gas that's good for paintball and airsoft these work very well with mad dog shells S thunder shocker shells so that gets its own unique place right here as well as this little pouch which I've got the plug caps for the S Thunder grenade shells these things you can find at sthunder.com real cheap I'll throw a link in the description to this video also if you're setting up for camping and everything you're gonna be there overnight or you're playing a nighttime game, it's always good to have light sticks. Light sticks are good for any number of things in camp or marking safe zones as far as what areas to avoid if you're playing at night. And you also want to bring an alternative light source as far as flashlights. I run a tack light on my gun and rule of thumb is if it's on your gun and you don't want to have to be walking around the field at night camping with your gun out and everything because that could lead to a lot of problems. So make sure you carry extra batteries. I usually prefer carrying this GI military flashlight on me. It's good for signaling. You've got different lenses in here. You could keep this standing up or hook it onto a line. Always a good thing to have. Toss that in for anything on your gear rig. You might want to have one of these little LED flashlights powered by three triple A's. Always a nice thing to have on your vest. So there's all that. Snap it up, cinch it down. Other thing I carry because I don't usually like carrying any more than what I need to on my vest. So I got a remote line and a backup if I need it. That goes in the pouch on the opposite side. as well as the light sticks.
Okay, moving on from that. Let's say you're having to carry a little extra with your personal protection. I usually have my mask and my airsoft tack helmet. These things could also be fixed to the backpack if and when you need it. You could take one of these backpack straps here for one of the pouches and just lace it through the helmet liner. In my case, this is an older model, so you have this web set up for the liner. You just take the backpack strap, run it through the helmet, and just snap it into place. With the setup like this, that way you don't lose anything off the helmet or you don't lose the chin strap because this early chin strap design that I have, if it's too loose, it will come off. So keep that in mind. Your mask, you could always use a chin strap or hook it up to your vest. So there it goes for that. And now all your carry gear is set up and a nice, neat little comprehensive package. You can just toss this entire thing inside your vehicle. And it's also easy to carry if you have to walk across the street. So we're also going to be moving on from here. Now, carrying a backup paintball gun, because especially if you're playing MILF Outlaw Ball, your gun can go bad within a couple seconds if you don't maintain it right. So, rule of thumb, like one week prior to the game that you're going on, you want to clean your marker. You want to check it, replace O-rings, lube it up as needed, test it to make sure it works. But after that, if it falls apart on you, bring it back up, but... Here's the most important thing. I play a lot of mill sims, so I usually carry a marker like this. This is a 98 Custom outfit to look like a Kalashnikov combat rifle. Now this thing, at first glance, at a distance, looks surprisingly real. So, for all us mill sim players, or paintball players in general, please, do us all a favor. And wrap up your guns in a carry bag, range bag, whatever. Because a lot of people, it doesn't matter if it's a speedball gun or whatnot. They'll get freaked. So, please. Put your guns in a bag. And after that, that's pretty much it. You can catch a written version of this video with the... Uh, Complete comprehensive list of your first aid kit suggestions at outerheavenpaintball.blogspot.com. I will be posting a link in the description to this video. Anyway, this is Big Boss, and I'm out of here.